is the law of the Utah. And ever she makes it plain. And not your foolish and feeble. And your strong and your sane. Strong for the red rage of battle. Pain, for I harry them sore. And me men girt for the combat. Men who are grit to the core. Swift as the panther in triumph. Fierce as the bear in defeat. Tired of a bulldog parent. Healed in the furnace heat. Send me the best of your breeding. Send me your chosen ones. Them will I take to my bosom. Them will I call my son. Them will I deal with my treasure. Them will I glut with my meat. But the others, the misfits, the failures, I trample under my feet. This is the law of the Yukon, that only the strong shall thrive. That surely the weak shall perish. And only the fit survive. Dissolute, damned and despairful, crippled and palsied and slain. This the will of the Yukon. Lo, how she makes it play. The passing years brought the cry for speedy transportation to the gold fields, and at last, in the answer to that cry, came the Queen of the Yukon. Hi, Queen! There she goes, down to get another bunch of prospectors. How'd they ever get that boat up here? The woman, son, she brought it up in pieces. Towed it, hold it, carried it, and fought her way through. Nothing but her determination. She must be quite a woman. You're darn cute. There's only one Sadie Martin, and the Yukon's mighty proud to claim. Hey, Bill. No more gambling for Mac. Hello, Ace. Hello, Shelly. Not playing today? Not yet. I'm looking for Sadie. I owe her some money. Did you give it to her? Oh, never mind, thank you. I have to watch Ace. He hoards every dime he gets his hands on. If I didn't watch you, we wouldn't have a dime to hoard. Right on the water, it all comes back. That stake started me on the road to a fortune. You know, I struck it rich. Good. Let's you try your luck here. This game looks easy. Think you will. Give me a marker for 200. How things doing, eh? All right. Looks like the boys brought down a lot of dust with them this time. Yep. By the time we reach White River, most of them will be ready to go back and dig for more. How's Joe doing at the faro table? He's doing all right. Having a little run of hard luck right now. Want me to take over? Mm-hmm. You're too lucky. You take it away too fast. That's too tough. I'll send for you. Corn's waiting in your office, Sadie. I'll be right up. How's she going, Captain? I'm on like a table. All it up in three hours. Don't rush her. This is good down below. Hello, Sadie. Hello, Thorn. Now, there's no use going back and forth over the old ground. The answer is still no. I will not sell the queen. Well, Sadie, I just thought maybe you didn't understand the situation. I understand it all right. But this is my country, Thorne. And nobody, not even you, is coming in here except on my terms. Well, let's put it this way. You mean if anybody's going to rob these people, it'll be you. Put it any way you like. The answer's still no. All right. You know that the Yukon Mining Company is going to develop the Moosehead diggings in any event. I just wanted you and the company to be friends. Listen, John Thorne. I got a report on everything you've done so far. I know that your company could pack a boat in here just like I did this one. You don't want my boat to haul in your equipment. 
You want to put the squeeze on the Moosehead country. With the queen in your hands, the little fellows wouldn't have any way of getting in and out except overland. That means they might as well give up their claims. Naturally, the boat will be held up on company business most of the time. Sure, you want to control not only the people that are in here, but keep the others out. As I said before, we understand each other. You can't fight the company. I don't want to fight the company. Neither do I want to sell out the little fellow I've been living on all these years. Well, we're moving in. Without the boat, it may take a little longer, say six months. At the end of that time, when you want to sell out, the company's offer may not be so generous. I'll take that chance. Hello, Mr. Thorne. Hello. Hope I'm not interrupting. Not at all, Ace. Mr. Thorne was just leaving. I wasn't, but I will. Think it over, Sadie. A couple of new angles might occur to you. I'm sure the company will listen to anything reasonable. Goodbye, Thorne. I wouldn't know one of your kind angles would walk up and fit me. That's what I mean. Be sure one of them don't. She said goodbye. You heard her. Sadie, why don't you sell out, John? Sell the queen? Sure. He's offering you more than you can make in the next couple of years. Why don't you cash in and get out of this? I don't know. Maybe it's because if I do, I'd sell out every little claim in the district. Maybe it's because you're Sadie Martin, queen of the Yukon. These people look up to you and depend on you. You have a responsibility to them. What are you talking about? No bless oblige. Huh? No bless oblige. That's the responsibility of nobility. It's the kind of thing a king has to do because he's a king. Oh, or a queen, huh? Mm -hmm. No bless oblige. French, huh? Yeah. Most of the people who practiced it had their heads cut off during the revolution. They're pretty stupid. Oh, so you're an old hand at revolutions, huh? Well, I'm an old hand at taking care of Sadie Martin. No bless the bleed. <laughs> you know, Ace, every once in a while you surprise even uh -huh. me. Pay no attention to it. See, I know a fellow once went to Harvard. Besides, what would I do if I sold the queen? Well, I've had a pretty good idea for a long while. Yeah, you're going to give me that little white cottage with the red roses stuff again now. That's right. Way out in the country. Great big living room, fireplace. Winter night. I was sitting around, relaxed. Yeah. Wondering where we could dig up a poker game. No, thanks. I tried that once. I woke up to find my lord and master had walked out on me, left me with a handful of clouds and a kid to support Maybe you just got a bad deal. You know, Sadie, there must be something of this home and fireside stuff. You see these men coming on the boat and all they can talk about is home. They babble about it. Why, some of them even get you in the corner and insist on showing you pictures of the wife and kids. Well, they can't all be suckers, can they? Maybe not. Especially about the kids. How old is she now? Eighteen in May. Must be about time to get out of that school. She graduates next week. And you're not there. What kind of a mother are you? Well, I'm the kind of a mother who's going to make a lady out of her daughter. Going to start her off so she won't make the mistakes I did. And I'm the kind of a mother who doesn't want to talk about it anymore. Go on downstairs now and grind out a few more dollars before we tie up at White River. Go on, get. You know something? What? You're not so tough. Yeah, but... <laughs> sure. Right, Ace. We had a swell time. See you soon. So long, Ace. So long, boys. Good luck. Good luck to you. Bye, boys. Yeah. Another touch. Hello. 
And where did you two come from this time? From Seattle. We left the boat soon as the dock because we wanted to get the diggers as quick as we could. We mean business this time. Yes, sir. Uh, we got an outfit and a little money, and we're really going mining. You bet you're going mining. Sadie's grub stakes you for five years. You get drunk and she has to feed you all winter. Yeah, and you haven't made it to the diggings yet. Yeah, I know. We always fell into evil ways. But this time it's going to be different. We took the pledge. You mean that? No liquor? Not a drop. Uh huh. Congratulations, boys. I knew you had it in you. Uh, wait a minute, Sadie. I did you a favor and picked up the mail here. Oh, good. I thought you going down there, you know, because mm-hmm. I. So, you took the pledge. Well, that's just for emergency or something. Snake bites. The only snake bites you find up in this country is right here in this bottle. You two better stay out here and avoid temptation. Hey, did I really sign the pledge? Of course we did. We didn't go in any church or anything. Remember when he had the hangover in Seattle, we said never again, didn't we? Hey, what do you keep saying we for? Well, you said it too. Captain? Let me out a little more. And here are the papers, that's all. Was there any mail for me? Oh, sorry, Maisie. No luck. But I haven't heard from Joe in two years. Never I... mind, you'll hear one of these days. You're going to have to do something about Maisie. She never gets any mail. What do you want me to do about it? Well, I to her sometimes. <laughs> Not me. She's coming up here. Good. Good? What do you mean, good? Well, how long since you've seen her? It's 11 years, Ace. I never wanted her to know what kind of business I'm in. I hammered this thing out the best way I could figure it. I wanted her to be a lady. In order for her to be one, I had to give up being one. Oh, no, Sadie. You never quit being a lady. Ace, what am I going to do? Well, let's see now. The Skagway, the 15th, from Overland, by boat, right through the landing. Hey, she must come in the same boat with Grub and Steak. Grub and Steak? Sure. Grub and Steak? Oh, Grub and Steak. You came in on the North Star, didn't you? Uh, yes. Were there many passengers? Crowded. How far behind you are the others? Well, ought to be coming along pretty soon now. Did you notice a young girl about 18? 18. 18. Come on, Grub. You're not so old that you can't remember a young girl. You remember the pretty one? Oh yes. Well, that's settled today. You take charge of the boat. Take care of things just like it was your own. Paint out that Sadie Martin sign and get a cabin ready for her. I'm traveling as a passenger. Remember that. Tell everybody. Right. I'll go get ready. Say, Sadie, wait a minute. What's this all about? My daughter. 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 Well, we got to get a drink now. much farther it is. Oh, I'm sure it's just over that ridge. That's what you said the last one. (laughs) 
There's the boat. Come on, let's hurry. There she is. Well, here we are. It took us a long time to get here, but isn't it wonderful? Yeah. You wait right here, and I'll go find out when the boat leaves. Oh, she is pretty, isn't she? Sure. Why shouldn't she be? Hey, you go on back to the boat. I'll meet her. Good luck, my letter. Sure, that's why I'm here. Oh, it's so good to see you. Oh, God. <laughs> here, let me look at you. Well, you're all grown up. You're a young lady. Oh, but what are you doing in the Yukon? Why didn't you stay in school? Well, I saved most of that money you sent me. Then when I got your letter that you couldn't come for graduation, I decided to come to you. You know, like Mohammed in the mountain. <laughs> You're not angry, are you, Mother? No, of course I'm not angry, but... I did think you'd graduate with your class. It didn't mean anything if you weren't there to see me. Oh, can't we be together from now on? Oh, but this is awful rough country for a young girl. Just as rough for you. And if we're together... Oh, please let me stay with you. <laughs> I'll try to work out something, honey. In the meantime, we'll... They said we'd have plenty of time. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Bob... This is my mother. Mother, this is Bob Adams. Well, I'm How glad to you? know you, Mrs. Martin. Helen told me so much about you. But I, I thought you lived in Moosehead. Yeah, I do. She came down with the boat to meet me. Oh, then we can all go back together? I guess so. The only boat there is. <laughs> <laughs> this is great up here. I remember what I told you, boys. When Sadie comes aboard, nobody's to know her or speak to her. Bob is surveyor. He's going to work in Moosehead. Yes, for a man named Thorne. Thorne? Well, yes. Do you know him, Mrs. Martin? Oh, yeah, yeah, I know him. <laughs> Good afternoon, Mrs. Martin. How do you do, Ace? Welcome aboard. Thank you. This is my daughter, Helen. This Ace Rincon. How do you do, Mr. Rincon? How do you do? And this is Mr. Adams. How do you do, Mr. Adams? Let's leave your bags right here. We'll take care of them. Thank you. Here, you. Boy, take care of this luggage. You ladies will come this way. I think we can make you comfortable. Hi. Mr. Adams, you can have the next case. Thank you, sir. I'll see you later, Helen. All right, Charles. This way, ladies. You like it? It's a lovely cabin. Put them down, boy. Well, I didn't say to drop them. Yes, sir. You help. Well, I'm sure we'll be very comfortable here. Thank you, Ace. I'll have the steward bring you some tea. Come on, honey. Let's go and take your things off from here. Think we got away with it? You were great, boys. I'm proud of you. Netwits. He made Not you. you. about buying the boat, eh? No. But there's nothing keeping me from trying to win it. Hello, Ace. Hello, Mr. Hunt. I think I'll give you a little complimentary play. Let's try then. All the better. All right, Joe. You dealing? Why not? Well, let's go. Give me a marker for town. Hundred to six wins. Check it in, boys. Five loses. Six wins. 
Mother, it's glorious up here. Mm-hmm. Can't we go down below? I'd like to see the rest of the boat. Oh, it's just a little old river boat, honey. You wouldn't be interested. Besides, the men get to playing kind of rough sometimes, hear them? Mm-hmm. Helen, tell me, who is this young Adams? He's kind of nice. What do you know about him? Practically everything. His family live in Boston. He graduated from a big engineering school there. Mm. You kind of like him, don't you? Uh-huh. Where'd you meet him? Well, I just met him on a trip up here. I see. Who is that, Mr. Vincon? Ace? Oh, just an old friend of mine. Interesting, isn't he? Now, look here, young lady. You keep your mind on nice young fellows like this surveyor. Never mind the Ace Rincon. Besides, it's time for you to go to bed. You must be dead, you know. You had a long trip. Anybody else? Ace loses. Ace wins. Me to sing that grub. That always reminds me of Joe, and I ain't seen him in two years. You ain't seen us all winter. Oh, go on, sing it for her, won't you, please? All right. You go. What are you talking about? Well, he couldn't buy it. Evidently, he's out to win it. Who's dealing? I was. You can't let him get away with it. What do you want to do? You go down and keep your eye on the game. Right. Team losers. Trey wins. Well, I got enough. Who 
Looks like Dawn's going to win the boot. Yeah. Pass the gums, look out, stomach, here come. Ah! No drinks for you boys this trip. Say these orders. Look. What about the kid? I thought you didn't want to be seen. See, he's got a war paint on. Looks like he's going to stop foreign. Hello, Betty. How's the girl? War wind. Well, the Queen Bee herself. Lauren, you seem to be doing all right. Oh, a little pleasure, fun, and amusement. How far do you want to go? Well, make it easy on yourself. Well, then that's all. Then a thousand, the Queen loses. Put that on the Queen. Ten loses, Jack wins. Six loses, Queen wins. Sadie Dealer. Sadie Dealer, though, yeah? All right, come on, Thorne. Place your desk. Seven to win. Eight loses, four wins. Six loses, nine wins. Seven loses. Oh, Last God. one for the poor old dealer. Mother? No. I went to my cabin and fell sound asleep. I just wanted to make sure you were all right. Well, I'm all right, but I can't sleep. What's all that noise? I don't know, but they certainly seem to be whooping it up. Let's sneak down and see what's going on. All right. I'll just be a minute. Thousand, the queen loses. Here's the soda. Ten loses, Jack wins. Eight loses, queen wins. Place your best on. Eight to win. Six loses, ten wins. Five loses, six wins. Eight loses. Place your best on. You're either the luckiest dealer in a Yukon or or what, son? Or I'm the unluckiest player. Seven loses, six wins. Seven loses, Trey wins. Deuce loses, four wins. Jack loses, nine wins. You telling me? Hey, what about you and me having a little drink, baby? down here, isn't it? Yeah, sometimes. What's that crowd over there? That's oh, just a faro game. Now that I'm here, I'd like to see it. Oh, you can see that any time. Bob, why don't you take her out and look at the river? It's beautiful at night. All right, sir. Sadie, sure take him, boys. Sadie. Seven losers, four wins. Seven losers, nine wins. Come on.
Come on, come on, come on. Get this stuff off the table. Let him have a place of bed. Take your bet. All this the queen loses. The bet. Jack loses. Five wins. Ten loses. Four wins. Nine loses. Three wins. Seven loses and the queen wins. And tell me she's dealing on the level. Always knew this game was crooked. <laughs> Give me some money. No bet. What do you mean? We're even. I got back all you were ahead. The game's closed to you, Thorne. Take over, Joe. Mother, I had no idea. Come on. I don't understand all this. There'll be a lot of things you don't understand about the Yukon. Come outside, I'll give you a few pointers. Now that you've seen your mother in action, I suppose you understand a lot of things. Of course. And I thought you were wonderful. I want you to teach me a deal. I want you to show me everything. I want to be just like you. Oh, Mother, we'll make a great pair. Now, look, honey. I guess we're a little mixed up. Let's sit down here and get straightened out. Helen, I don't know how much you remember of your childhood, but... I remember the snow, cold nights. Your fur coat. Yeah, that was Denver. You were just three years old. We'd had a good winter. That fur coat helped us eat that season. And before Denver, there was Creedy, Tonopah, Goldfield, and Cripple Creek, and Lake. You see, honey, your father was a gambler. Like Ace? Yes, like Ace. And like all the other shiftless, irresponsible, lying, cheating, no good grafters ago to make up the so-called gambling fraternity. Only more so. But, Mother, you must have loved him. Yeah. I must have thought I did anyhow. Just about your age when he came along. Oh, honey, don't ever marry a man to say this so. It's about eight to five you lose your own in the attempt. But you must have had lots of fun. Wasn't it exciting and thrilling? No, it the first few moments of happiness you'll soon forget in your effort to save your own self-respect. That's why I get you back east all these years, away from all this. Where you'd meet people who lead a normal life. People who have families, homes, traditions. Where you'd meet and have a chance to fall in love with a nice, clean young boy. Someone who'd want to devote his whole life to making you happy. Some young fellow like you. Like this surveyor, for instance. But, Mother, that's just it. I'm tired of young surveyors, young doctors, young lawyers, football players. Oh, they're all the same. They talk the same way. Their clothes are all alike. Why, I'm two jumps ahead of the whole crowd of them. This is what I want. What I've dreamed about. This is home. This is where you are. All those other places are somebody else's home. I want to meet your kind of people. I want to live the kind of life you've been living. Oh, Mother, don't you see? You... Mm. You want to be part of my life? The gambling, the liquor, the cheap tawdry. You saw the girls, you heard the men. Do you realize what you're saying? Of course. Oh, Helen, well, I'm not a child. After all, it's those things that put me through school and gave me everything I have. Including your mother? Yes, including my mother. And I'm proud of her and what she's done for me. Did you want me to be ashamed? No, but I hoped you'd be shocked and disgusted. I could have stood there. I wanted you to show the result of those years of schooling. I expected the normal reaction of any young lady. But, Mother, I'm not any young lady. I'm your daughter. You go to bed. Why, Mother? Please, Helen, go to bed. What are you doing out here? Thought you might need me. Oh, Ace. Why did she have to come up here when I had such wonderful plans for her? And what do you think? She loves it. She wants to learn to deal Pharaoh. She wants to be like me. Well, what'd you expect, Sadie? She's got your blood in it. Yeah, that's what you just told me. Well, I'm not going to have it, Ace. I'm going to sell the queen. What? You heard me. Why, a few minutes ago, I saw you turn a crooked card. 
first time in five years. So you could keep the queen. Now you want to sell it. I've got to. I don't want to argue about it. Go on down and make a deal with Thorne before we get to Moosehead, will you please? Go on. All right. That's the way you feel about it. That's what you're offered, isn't it? Yes. No, please. don't make it any tougher for me than you have to. There's the deal. Take it or leave it. Well, you're not talking to some drunken sourdough. No, that's right. Thorne, I've seen you move into the diggings along the Yukon and grab what some poor devil worked and sweated to find. You've got an awful nerve calling me a crook. What about you? You bring him into a place like this and take it away. Go on. You know as well as I do that the Queen dealt a crooked barrel box tonight. You didn't mean that, did you, Thorn? No, yeah, of course you didn't. Now sign that. Let me get out of here. Attention here, everybody! This steamer is now the property of the Yukon Mining Company, and as such, will make no trips except on company business. That means it's not available for general passengers or freight. What's the idea? What's the idea? Just a minute, Mr. Vaughan. Does that mean we can't use the Queen? That's exactly what it means. Then what are we going to do? You will have to figure that out. We never figured to sell the boat. What are we going to do for transportation? What did you do before I brought the Queen in? Canoes. Each man peddled his own supplies. Days to make the trip and four or five trips to bring in enough. This country never really opened up till you brought the Queen up here. You know we're licked without the Queen? You know you sold us out the thorn? What have we got here? A bunch of men or a lot of yellow cups? This the best you can do? Come crying to a woman? A woman that staked you and babied you for years. All right, she sold the Queen. That's her business. Suppose she hadn't sold it. Suppose it had been wrecked or burned down. What would you do then? We'd have to figure something out. All right, get busy and figure out something now. Don't stand around here sniveling. You've got your health and you've got your claim. Go on, get to work. I'll walk up the cabin with you. You two <laughs> Is that right? Will those men suffer because you sold the queen? Maybe. Then why did you sell it? I'll get your mother settled in the cabin. Bob, you want to check up with Thorne. His office is right over there. Take Helen with you. Thank you, sir. But, Mother, I... Uh, yes, honey, you run along. Ace and I have got business to talk over. You'll be going down river. Take Helen out. Oh, yeah. That's right. And forgot that for a minute. Ace, you know I gotta do it. I can't keep that kid up here. You know that, don't sure. you? Sure. Don't worry about it. I've been up in the country so long, it's gonna seem awful strange in the city. Here we are, all right. Maybe you find that little white house. <laughs> With the roses on the porch, huh? You know something? I'm worried about the way those men talk to Mother. I can't understand why she sold the queen. I don't know what would have happened if Ace Rincon hadn't stepped in. Yeah, he's quite a man, isn't he? 
Yes. He's the kind of man you expect to see in a country like this. Big Merle. Did you see the way he handled that man in the casino last night? And what he did to the one who said Mother was cheating? Yeah, I saw him. You've been through an awful lot together, Ace. Yep. What are you going to do? Oh, I'll take grub and steak and go on up to Diggins. If you strike anything, you're in for half, you know. Thanks. Well, I guess I'd better round up the boys. Drop us a line, will you? Sure. Go on. Oh, this must be Thorne's office here. Well, we got the queen all right, but it was a lucky break. The kid hadn't seen her mother dealing, said he'd never sold it. You're right. Did you hear what he said? Yeah. Oh, you want to come in with me while I see Thorne? I'll only be a minute. No, I think I'd better go home. See you later. Goodbye. Goodbye. I'd like to see Mr. Thorne, please. I'm Thorne. I'm Bob Adams, your surveyor. Well, I'm glad to know you. Ready to go to work? You bet. You'll enjoy it up here. Just do your work, mind your own business, and we'll get along fine. Get your equipment together, come back, and I'll give you the layout. Thank you, sir. I don't know how this is going to work out being partner with a gambler. Got to get pretty lonesome sitting around playing cards all the time. Yes, and it's going to be pretty tough without any whiskey, too. Lucky for you, too, I am a gambler. We wouldn't have any claim at all. Well, if there's gold there, we'll fight it. We've been hankering to go mining for a long time. Mr. Rinko, I want to speak to you for a moment. Sure, Alan. What's the matter? I just found out why Mother sold a boat. Oh? I heard Thorne's men talking. She sold out because I saw her dealing and liked it. Mother and I had a long talk last night, but I didn't think it would cause this much trouble. Your mother knows what she's doing. She hasn't seen you for a long time. You walked in and surprised her. Now she wants to be with you, don't you see? You're in love with her, aren't you? What? Well, we have a sort of a business arrangement. I have followed her around for the last ten years, if that's what you mean. Are you going to follow her back to the States? No, I have a claim up here. Going to hunt for gold. You'll find it, too. You're the kind of a man that could get anything he wanted. You're a girl's ideal. I always visualize somebody like you. Strong and fearless. Why, you just looked at that man in the casino last night and he was afraid. Well, he was the kind of a man to be afraid if almost anybody looked at him. He wasn't afraid when Bob looked at him. Well, Bob's a stranger to the North. That isn't it. Bob's not your kind of man. I'm only 18, but I'm old enough to know that. I'll bet Bob's all right. You just give him a chance. He'll come through. I'm not so sure. My idea of a man has changed in the last 24 hours. You better run home to your mother. Well, here we go, boys. How far is it? About 12 miles. Oh, I didn't know you were here. I'm sorry I was. Helen, I don't like the way you're throwing yourself at this man. You don't like it? What business is it of yours? Well, I thought that... You had no right to think. I'll do what I want to do. At least he's a man. Cone. I thought he's left for the claim. He did, but not before I found out why you sold the boat. Ace talks too much. Oh, he didn't tell me. 
I heard Thorne's men talking. Oh. Mother, do we have to go back? I love this country. Can't we stay here? No, honey, I've been away from civilization too long. I'm going to spend the rest of my life taking care of my little girl. Of course, Mother, but you can... Now, honey, you run along in the other room and get your things ready. All right. Mother? Hmm? How old is Ace Rincon? Oh, I don't know, 39, 40. Hey, wait a minute. Why? Oh, I was just wondering. 45 if he's a day. Hey, you. Howdy, men. You pop Leonard. Sure am. We're from the Yukon Mining Company. You're on our land. You're mistaken, mister. This is mine. You'll be staked out under the laws of Alaska. You've got to have a certificate signed by the land office. Where's your authority? Right here. Now get! Why, you no good, Stephen. All right, fellow. All right, that's good. How much for it? About half a mile. Couldn't you win a claim closer to town? Well, I had my eye on one, but the fellow was too good a poker player. Well, I don't like it. Don't like what? The quiet. Seems to me there ought to be men working all along here. That's right. We ain't seen no one. They're a pair of very good warriors. Looks like a typhoon stuck it. Yeah. Oh! 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 Who did this, Pop? Never saw him before. They got me in the back. We're heading back to town. Thorne's men are moving in on all the claims along Independence Creek. Everyone tells the same story, Sadie. They come in with maps, claim the land, then start slugging. Yeah, that's what we get for standing around. I say, let's go get them. Wait a minute. I'm going to talk to Thorne. While I'm gone, you fellas round up our men. I'll come back and tell you what happened. All right, we'll get that much. Come on, boys. What does all this claim jumping mean? Well, hello, Sadie. Won't you sit down? Never mind that. I want to know what this claim jumping means. Well, I warned you that we were moving in. I know. But usually that means you're going to force the little fellow to sell out for one-tenth of value. But you're not buying these people out. You're driving them out. Well, we didn't think it was necessary to buy, except in a few cases. Oh. However, this country was never met with any degree of accuracy. Here's our engineer's report of the district. The surveyors are now checking on claims as filed. We find enough variations in most of them to make our positions hold up in court. At least hold up long enough for you to shove these people out. Well, if that's the way you want to put it. However, with the money that you got from the Queen, I don't see anything that you've got to worry about. Well, I am worrying. They're my people, Thorne. Oh, I see. It's the principle of the thing. Yes. That's what you want to call it. Hello, Sadie. Boys told me you were here. Thought you went up river. We turned back. We found Pop Willard shot through the back. What? Who did it? Pop didn't seem to know. Must have been a couple of miners fighting. I don't think so. But I can't prove anything. You were talking about principles when I came in. We have a couple of principles up here about claims. I was just explaining to Sadie on the map that... Maps don't mean much up here against a man's words. 
He stakes out his claim, files a certificate, and that's that. Man that don't believe it gets shot. Thorne, I think you're responsible for these killings. But if I can ever prove it, look out. Come on, Sadie. right, fellas. This is no time for gunfighting. Thorne's got enough of a case on us to drag us into court, and that's where we've got to fight him. Well, we're not giving up our claim. Oh, oh, you. you don't have to. He's taking them. This looks like war, boys. We've got to refile our claims as quick as we can. Courts means lawyers. Lawyers mean money. All my goals tie up my claims. Now, don't worry about money. We'll pick ourselves someone to go down to the land office and hire as a lawyer. I'll finance the trip. You will. Yeah. Yeah. You heard what Sadie said, boys. Collect those location certificates for all the claims on Independence Creek. And get them into the land office as quick as you can. We'll hire a lawyer, get out an injunction against Thorne, and bring back the United States Marshal to serve it. That's the man. We sure appreciate you sticking with us, Sadie. When we heard you sold the boat, we thought you were pulling out on us. Me? Pulling out? And you fellas are in trouble? What kind of a queen do you think I am, anyway? <laughs> Nice work, Sadie. I'm pulling out for the claim. If you need me, send for me. Oh, boy, I don't know. Now, listen, this is what we got to do. Say, Carson. Yeah? I want you to find that surveying outfit. Move them over in sections five and six and tell them to step on it. We've got to push this thing through. Section five takes in Ace Rinkin's claim. That's right. I thought maybe we were passing him up. We're not passing anybody up. It's not Ace I'm worried about. He can be handled. But Sadie's got money in addition to brains. And that's a tough combination. Now, come on. Get busy. Now, here's enough gold to hire us a couple of good lawyers and take care of things in general. Have you got the claim certificate? Every one of them right in here. Yeah, well, now, these will prove titles. The lawyers can do the rest. Hop in and get going. Well, so long, Mark. Oh, take care of you. Step on it. Good luck. Well, I guess... Oh, here we are, right? Come now. Wait a minute. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Think you're going to get away with this lawyer business? Sure. That's what they had to do at Skagway. Well, me ain't got no use for lawyers. No, me neither. Remember a couple quick? Now, we shot six claim jumpers there. Yeah, you'll probably have to do the same thing here, too. Oh, we got company. You there? Yeah. You two go on with your work. I'll be the reception committee. yourself. What's all this about? I'm running a line through here. Did you know this is my claim? No, I didn't. I'm just a surveyor. But it looks like my line's going to cut your claim in half. Look, young fella, I don't know how you're hooked up in this, but you're new up in this country, and I wouldn't like to see you get into trouble. I can take care of myself, even if I don't go around bullying people. Oh, so that's it. Yes, that's it. Well, we'll have to do something about that. Boys, it's got to go back. Thorne's running a line right through the middle of our claim. Oh, doggone it. Every time we start to work, we got to go someplace. How are you going to get gold unless you start digging? Well, if that's the way you two feel about it, you better stay here and catch up with your mining. 
Well, on second thought, I guess maybe we'd better go with him. You might buy us a drink. That's what I meant. Here. Look, Cap. It's a body. Fellas taking the Independence Creek certificates to the land office. I've got to get the moose head. Yes, sir. There's a certificate of every miner's claim in Independence Creek. With those to submit in addition to our own surveyor's report, we'll have this thing sewn up tight as a drum. Good work, Carson. It's like shooting fish. He didn't even know he was being followed. Now all we have to do is to get him to the land office without anyone knowing we've got him. I can make the trip. No, I can't take that chance. I'll have to get someone they'll never suspect of carrying him. That surveyor's out there that says he wants to see you, boss. Good. Tell him to come in. He's just the one you want. Hello, Mr. Thorne. Hello, Bob. Here's the report. Good. I ran into a little trouble. Several men claim I'm running a line through their property, and I've heard a lot of talk in town. <laughs> That's why we're surveying, to straighten things out. To let these men know where they stand. I just want to make sure that I'm not mixed up in anything crooked. Of course not, my boy. See these? They're the certificate signed by every miner in this section. We're going to file them for the boys. Tell you what I'll do. I'll let you take them down to White River yourself. Well, I... Go on. You've done a good job. You'll enjoy the trip. I'll send you down to Queen. Well, thank you, sir. Don't mention it. <laughs> What are you doing in town? Mr. Thorne's sending me down to the land office in White River. When will you be back? That depends. Helen, on the boat coming up, well, we sort of made a pact. Bob, let's not talk about that now. We've got to talk about it, because I'm not coming back here as long as you keep throwing Ace Rinkin up to me all the time, telling me what a big he-man he is. You've got no right to talk to me that way. Well, that's the way I feel about it. Look, Helen, I'm not a gambler, and I don't go around calming drunks with a look, but I... I love you, and... Well, the rest will take care of itself. Okay, forget it. I'm sorry I brought the matter up. What's the matter with Bob? Thorne's sending him down to the land office in Wiper. Did you have a fight? Yes. He's hateful. Oh, I don't think so. He's just a boy in love with you. Well, I don't love him. Then what are you crying about? I don't know. All right. <laughs> Come on, youngster. Don't act like that. Be all right. Oh, lots of pretty pictures. Nice work. She had a fight with Bob. Of course she'd have a fight with Bob. Why shouldn't she with you hanging around? What are you talking about? You. The child's crazy about you. What? I'm telling you, she wants Bob to be just like you. She thinks you're the big he-man of the backwoods. Are you crazy, baby? Well, I'm old enough to be the kid's father, you know that. Sure, I know that. But I'm telling you what she thinks. Oh, quit it. Now, don't get me gummed up all around, will you, Ace? Come on, baby. Ace! Ace! Found a guy on Smarty. What? Looking in the river near my claim. Shot through the head. What about the bag with the certificate? No, nothing on him. Ellen said Bob was going to the land office. He just got away in a boat. We'd better catch him.
Hey, Thomas, you get on here. Never mind that, Cap. Where's that surveyor? He's in number three cabin. Right. What's the idea? You've got papers, location certificates that someone gave you. Sure I have. I want them. They're company property. Not if I know what I'm talking about. Let that alone. Take it easy, son. I told you I didn't want you to get into trouble in this country. You ever really think you're big enough to take care of yourself? I am. I knew I had those certificates. Did you know Thorne had a man killed to get them? What are you talking about? Look, Adams is on his way to the land office with these. His body was found floating in the river today. Well, how do you know Thorne did it? How do you suppose Thorne got them? Put this kid right, boys. Sir, you got Ace wrong. He likes you. He doesn't want to see you get in trouble. All right, Cap, swing around. We're going back. Huh? Yeah, let me take it. The ace had a hunch those certificates were stolen. That's why we chased the boat. Listen, it was Thorne's gang that ran the miners off the claim. And those that didn't run, he killed them. Yeah, it was Thorne's gang that killed old Pop Willard. He's making a sucker out of you. You don't want to be a sucker, do you? So they found Mick Adams' body. That doesn't prove anything, does it? That's right. He could have been killed by anybody. After the kid gets to the land office, they can figure things out for themselves. We'll be sitting on the claim. Went after it. Won't Thorn be surprised? He will when I get through with him. You going to get him? I'm going to give him a beating of his life. That'll be something. He's got the certificates. It's a fine frame up trying to get me to file stolen papers.
Yeah. Looks like you got him just over the right eye. Mine's from between the eyes. She must be thrown a little bit to the left. <laughs> Nice work, Bob. Thank you, sir. No luck at you. Come on. Rob, steak. Would you mind helping this gentleman into his office? He liked it. <laughs> Have a little business with him. Boys, your location certificates are safe. <laughs> I'm going to have a little talk with Mr. Thorne. I don't think we'll have any more trouble with the Yukon Mining Company. <laughs> Snap out of it. I want you to write what I tell you. So there'll be no more trouble up here. Thank it. I, John Thorne, hereby confess. You look a little better anyway. Thank you, dear. Well, I guess Ace knew what he was doing all right. And I acted like a kid. You didn't fight like a kid. This is Martin. Yes, sir. Um, uh, Helen and I... Well, we sort of figured on getting married and... Well, that's fine. But I'll have to stay up in the Yukon because Bob will have a lot of work to do unraveling this mess. Well, that's great, honey. It's a wonderful country to do you a lot of good. Oh, I see. It all depends, eh? That's right. It all depends on who you're with. <laughs> okay, Bob. Thanks. Well? Well? Well, I... I know I'm kind of... But could you? I'll sign it. Those miners out there would like nothing better than to take care of you. I'm going to hold them back an hour. If you're not gone by that time, I'll turn them loose. You see that he does it. Oh, we will. Don't worry. We'll do it all right. Shooting straight now. Murder, plain murder. Oh, hello. Well, everything's all straightened out. Pulling out now. Kids all right? Well, they're fine. They're going to be married. Good. That Bob's a good boy. Yeah, he's all right. Well, take care of yourself. Oh, you're walking out on me. Just leaving me flat. Well, you'll be back running the queen. I'm tired of being the queen's jester. Well, maybe I'm tired of being the queen. Why don't you ask me what my plans are? Or aren't you interested? Sure, I'm interested. But I'll get over it. Oh! What's the matter? That's my chimney. Chimney? Sure, don't you know a cottage when you see it? Don't look like a cottage to me. Well, it is. There's the... Porch. Porch? With the roses. That look kind of cute at that. Where are you going to find it? Oh, you big lung. Let's go look for it. <laughs> 